we would go into schools and I remember doing our first staff meeting showing ChatGPT and we started out with uh, really about data privacy and data yeah. literacy. And I think every person's going to have to have that understanding because you don't want a model to be trained on data that you don't want it to, to know about you, use, right? Yeah. And use. And so if you start with that in mind, the AI literacy becomes a part of that. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We're so, so glad that you are here with us today. I am here with another wonderful friend. This is Rob Dixon, and he is from Wichita, well, Kansas. Wichita Kansas now. Yeah. We started hanging out. Oh, my gosh. You Even were before in? Omaha. Yeah. Yeah. Before Omaha. That sounds like a Peyton Manning thing. <laughs> I had to bring up my Tennessee girl or yeah, whatever. Um, you were, what district were you in? It would in? be in Andover. Yeah. yeah. And then you moved to Omaha. Yep. And then back to Kansas. Back to Kansas. And he's in Wichita now. And he's in CIO. So I know that's different for us. But what is so cool about having Rob with us today is he's going to give the CIO version of everything that we need to know about integrating technology into our classrooms. You know, we as teachers and principals and leaders, we have a vision of what we want our classrooms to look like and the interaction that we want to see in them. And sometimes, never would happen with Rob, but sometimes we take that vision up and the CIO is like, you can't do that, that's impossible. That's gonna create so many problems. Boo. And he rains all over our parade. But you're not that kind of CIO, are you? Well, I hope not. I know. <laughs> I hope not, too. I know not. I know not. <laughs> Tell me. Um, oh, and I didn't mention he won, his district won the Distinguished District Award from ISTE this year, which is a phenomenal award. And it is an award that sets districts apart for implementing the ISTE standards and uh, really embracing technology throughout the entire district. So congratulations. Thank you, Keisha. On that big win, I that's huge. That. Yeah. So talk about how you, how you do it. How do you do what you do? And how do you make sure that your schools have what they need? And, and you also have the guardrails in place for what you need to do. Yeah. You know, I would say that I'm grateful that I've had mentors in my career that have said, hire the right people. Yeah invest in the right talent. And I get to work with someone who I've worked with for a long time, Diane Smokorowski, she's amazing. She uh, was inducted the National Teacher Hall of Fame. She's been kind of at my side in instructional technology for quite some time now, a couple decades, yeah. and has helped me. And, and I've learned from her as well as uh, getting experiences. My previous superintendent, Mark Evans, allowed me to start virtual schools in my past, uh, start instructional technology initiatives, think about things like bringing Verizon Innovative Schools into our district, uh, both in Omaha and in Wichita, yeah. and working with partnerships and developing strong partnerships. And I think those things have helped me to learn what it means to really integrate technology into the classroom. Yeah, the other thing I'm gonna give you kudos on is you listen to teacher and principal voice. I mean, you're very intentional about making sure that what you're doing doesn't hamper anything in a school or classroom. And I think that's, I mean, I think a lot of CIOs are, are doing that, but you were really among the first in the country, in my opinion, to, to embrace that. Yeah, we have a very active technology committee. Yeah. It comprises of parents, of principals, of teachers. And I've, I've always had that model that has allowed voice and choice agency. Yep. In fact, our device model that we have has been uh, influenced by student experience and has been influenced by teacher uh, feedback. Mm -hmm. And I think that gives uh, more agency to how students learn, what they want their experience mm -hmm. to like, because I think we're still in this in-between of like a human connection, yet most things that we do are now digital. Yeah, so. yeah. We, I've talked about that with some of my other guests where 
you know, that you can't get a job that doesn't have any kind of technology integrated into it. You have to know how to use technology and how to interact with it. And I think in the future, if we're thinking and predicting on that, there's going to be no job that's going to be absent AI. Right. I mean, there's going to be some component of AI in your job and your role is really going to be, I mean, we, we talk about and we, we emphasize the human intelligence, but I think in the future, you're going to be hired literally for your human intelligence and how you interact with AI so that that combination boosts the performance of the job. I mean, I know that sounds crazy, but I do think that that's yeah. where we're headed. So talk a little bit about how you see that playing out. And then we're going to talk about infrastructure and crazy things like that. You know, I think uh, back to 2023 when Smoke and I, I call her Smoke, uh, she's amazing. Uh, we would go into schools and I remember doing our first staff meeting showing ChatGPT. And we started out with... Uh, really about data privacy and data yeah. literacy. And I think every person's going to have to have that understanding because you don't want a model to be trained on data that you don't want it to, to know about you, use. right? Yeah. And use. And so if you start with that in mind, the AI literacy becomes a part of that, right? So I'm thinking of, all right, I need to get an answer. I wonder, right? Yeah. You think about the curiosity of things. Yeah. What I love about AI is there's no question that makes you feel stupid, right? In which in, in a human interaction, I might have that dissonance between us of like, oh, I don't know what Keisha thinks about me if I ask her this question. Mm -hmm. And what will that answer be? I could ask as many questions as I want, but then in a frame of mind of what data do I want to have that AI understand about me? Mm -hmm. And is that data that's confidential? If it is, I probably shouldn't share it in that way. Mm -hmm. I think data privacy is one of the flags that went up almost immediately right. when we introduced AI in classrooms. And this goes back to when we introduced it as an assessment tool. Um, how have you seen, I mean, we've got, we've got legislation that's been Im implemented in some states. Right. There's talk at the federal level, no action yet. Right. There's this uh, really great document that has been sent out and a lot of companies have signed on to around kind of their position with AI and their role in protecting. But talk a little bit about your role as a CIO and what you're looking for when you're working with companies around privacy and just any anything that you're concerned about with AI and how you how you want to interact with a company when you're having that conversation. You know, this is top of mind right now because we just finished our board approved our policy uh, over the summertime. Oh, and uh, we're working on our guidelines. We have two more meetings before those are complete, right before the fall starts. Okay. And so we're having those conversations with parents. We actually have a we're using the learning lab, which Creative Minds is at. It's yeah. our micro school. It's a K-6 vertical classroom. Oh, no. And uh, that Smoke and I got to start this last year. Um, what I love about that conversation around AI is um, in my state, Kansas, we have not been given any recommendations as far as From what that state? should look like, right? Wow. I think a lot of people are in that boat. Yeah. What I worry about because I'm in an urban setting, I have the resources to do that. I think about the state of Kansas or even the state of Nebraska where I came from before, where it was really urban in my setting, but then it gets really rural really quick. And those rural settings, they have no, there's no mechanism to help them understand how they need to navigate this. Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to help them. Yeah. Uh, even the large districts need to help those rural districts yeah, understand what that looks like. Whenever I look at the programs that are coming in, how we do it in our guidelines and in our policy is AI is a product and AI is a feature. And so when you look at it from that standpoint, uh, you've got to take some thoughtful uh, recommendations as far as how you evaluate both new programs coming in as well as 
feature sets of AI that are being inserted into programs that you might have already approved. Right. And so when you think about right. those things, is the model being trained on my data? Yeah. Right? Uh, is confidential, what does confidentiality look like in there? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why we have obviously Microsoft Copilot where teachers can utilize student data in there because mm -hmm. it's not trained on the model and it doesn't get saved. Mm -hmm. But then we have other tools that we can't. So we have different practices for different tools. Mm -hmm. And those have to be outlined for teachers and now for students as we start to expose them to AI resources as well. And that's still both as a product and as a feature.